one. Good evening and welcome to tonight's uh, Board of School Trustees meeting. Uh, we begin this meeting uh, like we do every meeting with the Pre Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, and now we have roll call of members. Good evening, Steve Corona from the 5th District. Julie Hollingsworth, District 1. Jennifer Mathias, District 2. Ann Duff, member at large. Riley Booker, District 4. Noah Smith, District 3. And to my left, we have Dr. Mark Daniel, Superintendent, Hoorin Community Schools. And I am Maria Norman, member at large. Um, tonight, we start with awards and recognition. And I'm sorry, I don't have my computer up. Yes. Um, Fort Wayne Community Schools recently celebrated the class of 2023 during graduation ceremonies for each high school. Nearly 1,855 <coughs> graduates received their diploma on June 2nd and 3rd at the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum. Highlight, the highlight video captures moments from FWCS graduation ceremonies from Fort Wayne Virtual Academy, Northrop, Northside, Snyder, Southside, and Wayne High Schools. so good I might cry <laughs> I think you will in about six years for sure. well, well most definitely most definitely <laughs> um, okay so next up we have the consent agenda which includes the approval of minutes for a regular meeting on May 2nd vouchers and payroll and the personnel report um, is there a motion on the floor so moved. It wasn't May 2nd was it isn't it like May 22nd or something? Oh, thank you for that. Yes, the date is incorrect. 22nd. 22nd. There's a two missing. Yes. Approval of minutes from the regular meeting on May 22nd, 2023. Vouchers and payroll and the personnel report. And the minutes. Second. And the, oh, yes. And the minutes. Yes. Move for approval. Thanks, Ann. Thanks, Steve, for the second before the... <laughs> move. Um, Dr. Daniel, was there anything on the personnel report you wanted to highlight? Once you've approved. Okay, That's fabulous. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So, with that said, we have um, Tim Cap. Tim, you would rise. Hi, Tim. 
So Tim um, has gained some additional responsibilities, and he's the executive director of Student and Family Support Services. Just a little bit about Tim. He became the executive director of Student and Family Support Services after serving as a director since 2018. He joined FWCS in 1998 as a teacher at Fairfield Elementary, then served as a technology coordinator until he became the secondary administration coordinator. In 2012, he moved to Tolls Intermediate School as the assistant principal overseeing Tolls New Tech Middle School. And in 2016, he became principal of Tolls. Tim will now oversee the student family support services and transportation, as well as the health and wellness department. So, Tim, thank you for um, taking on a couple other du duties there. Um, but again, just wanted to bring that to your attention. Matt Schiebel, Executive Director, Safety and Community Partnerships. So, Matt joined. FWCS in 1987, and most recently served as secondary level director. His education career began, began at Black Hawk Middle School, where he taught science for several years, became assistant principal of Lane Middle School in 2002, and two years later became principal of Northwood <coughs> Middle School. He moved to Shawnee Middle School as principal in 2008, and then served as principal at Kikianga Middle School. In 1997, Matt was named the Fort Wayne Community Schools Teacher of the Year, and it was one of 10 state finalists. So, Matt, sort of neat seeing your career, isn't it? Flash before your eyes. <laughs> so, uh, again, taking on more of a role than, uh, again, safety, as well as community partnerships. So thank you, Matt. Jennifer Burney. Hey, Jennifer. She's Director of Special Education, Jennifer joined FWCS in 2014 as an alternative learning teacher at Shambaugh Elementary School. Her teaching career began at Norwell and Belmont High Schools, where she taught special ed, eventually becoming the lead special education teacher at Norwell Middle School. In 2017, she became a building inst instructional coach at Shambaugh Elementary, and in 2018, she was named special education compliance manager. As the director, uh, Jennifer will now oversee special education programming. So, again, all three of you, thank you as you take on more responsibilities, as well as, uh, should I just say, uh, figuring out ways to better serve our kids. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, and congratulations. <laughs> all right. We have... The Esser Bunch Early Childhood Center Project. Steve, can you do that? I sure can. Thank you. It's recommended the board approve the following construction contracts for Esser Bunch Early Childhood Center Rooftop Unit Replacement Project. And uh, board members have information that show um, a recommendation to um, approve contract with Shambaugh and Son Total number is $236,880. Project consists of replacement of the five pre-purchased rooftop units at Bunch, which were approved uh, earlier this year. And um, primary engineering designed the project. It will be funded by the ESSER dollar grants and is scheduled to be completed before the end of the year, Darren Hess is here. You also see board members, the bids from the uh, three contractors, current mechanical, project design and piping, and then Shambaugh and Son, which had the low bid. Awesome, great, thanks Steve. Um, is there a motion on the floor? So moved. Th okay. Thanks Ann, thanks Jennifer. Uh, any questions for Darren? Is this a different um, thing we do, Darren, compared to others with a pre-purchased roof? Is that unique or is that something we've done? I just missed it. Uh, we typically don't. Uh, we like to have that all wrapped up in the original package, but because of all the uh, pandemic delays in the last couple of years, we're using it as a strategy until we feel better. Um, so once we decided the, you know, the engineering and size the units, we went ahead and pre-purchased them. 
Um, so it's not <coughs> typical, but it's not atypical either. So is it like a roof made in a factory and brought and set on top, or is it just we're buying the materials and supplies and then? Yeah, it'll be the complete unit. It's a custom designed, engineered, uh, built, uh, built unit, and they'll come in a truck and they'll uh, crane it over the weekends. Uh, we're looking probably mid October by the time we receive them. It'll be quite a sight in the neighborhood, I imagine. Yeah. No big uh, roofs. Is this something you? Is this the first time we've done this? Then? Uh, this is the second replacements of these units. Well, the first life. time we've done the uh, pre-designed, pre-purchased? Uh, no, uh, we've probably four or five times now at least that we've had a pre-purchase of equipment, long lead item. Do we set the, this roof right on top of the existing or do they tear it off? And... This is the roof replacement unit, so the HVAC units that go up on the roof. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. sorry. Any other questions for Derry? No. All those in favor? Uh, uh, any opposed? <coughs> Next up, we have the Nearpod subscription. Julie? It's recommended that the board approve the purchase of a three year subscription from Nearpod Inc. of Dania Beach, Florida for $245,637. This purchase is for a subscription that will provide full access to Nearpod for all K-12 teachers in the corporation. Nearpod is a web-based platform that teachers will use to create interactivity in presentations and videos. This encourages students to take a more active role during direct instruction, promoting greater levels of engagement and greater sense of accountability. Nearpod is the sole source provider of their product. Indiana law does not require bidding for purchases made from sole source providers. Funding is from the Common School Fund Loan. Uh, Eric Lorber, District Technology Coordinator, is available to answer any questions. Thanks, Julie. Is there a motion on the floor? I move for approval. Thanks, Julie. Second. <coughs> Thanks, Ann. Any questions for Eric? How often is this used to, a tool used, Eric? Beg your pardon? How often is this tool used by the kids or the teachers? This is something that teachers would use when they're doing direct instruction. So if they're going through a Google slide presentation or a PowerPoint presentation, they would be able to embed questions into the slides so students can do that check for understanding in real time. So whenever a teacher feels like they want to get data during their direct instruction, they can use it. Has anybody within the district been using this system? We have had teachers using the free version of Nearpod and it's functionality is very similar to Pear Deck, which we used previously in the school district. We sent out a survey to teachers this past spring to see what type of educational software they wanted. And overwhelmingly, teachers did want the ability to embed these questions into their direct instruction, but they also wanted the ability to put questions into instructional videos for our teachers that are pre-recording their lessons and doing the flipped instructional model. So we had explored Edpuzzle but we realize that Nearpod can do what Edpuzzle does and what Pear Deck does. So it's an opportunity to consolidate and make things a little simpler. So the first pair, what did you call that? Pear Deck. Pear Deck. So is that going away then? That is going away, yes. Okay, and how long? It, I mean, do we know how long that, a year? I mean, is it a crossover between some the two software programs that we have then? We'll be getting access to Nearpod in the beginning of July, and so we're phasing out Pear Deck. We'll have Nearpod starting in July. We'll be doing some professional development around Nearpod at the Ignited EdTech Conference this summer. And once we have access, we can start recording how-to videos to be posted on the integrated Google site and the human capital management system. So you said this is the first time we're buying the subscription for this? Is Correct. That, and you said teachers were wanting it? Mm -hmm. How many? I do not have the information off the top of my head. <clears throat> Is this something where you can ask a question during a presentation, get like immediate feedback? Correct. From students? Yes, you get immediate feedback on a teacher dashboard that the teacher can see on their screen. Okay. Sweet. Any other questions? Thanks, Eric. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Next up, we have the Seesaw subscription renewal. Jen? It is recommended that the board approve the purchase of a three-year subscription renewal from Seesaw of San Francisco, California for $172,787.22. This purchase provides elementary students and teachers with access to Seesaw online learning journal, which provides tools to capture student learning through video, pictures, and multimedia tools in an easy-to-use application for all levels of elementary learners. District curriculum utilizes Seesaw lessons, re, lesson resources to provide supplemental material for ELA, numeracy, digital citizenship, computer science, and career exploration. Seesaw is the sole provider of their product. Indiana law does not require bidding for purchases made from sole providers. Funding will come from the Common School Fund, fund Low. Shannon Quigley, Manager of Learning Technology, will be available to answer questions. Thanks, Jen. Is there a motion on the floor? So moved. Second. Thanks, Jen. Or thanks, Ann. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> Any questions for Shannon? What kind of things can they teach with digital citizenship or help support digital citizenship? There's a series of lessons that teachers have access and they're differentiated by grade level so it will start to review you know safety in terms of exploring things online how to um, treat others when you're talking online so it kind of progresses through age-appropriate lessons it, um, it also goes with common sense media which are some of the lessons we put into our um, first 20 days of school so all students should have access to this and this gives them a place to respond or share thoughts or ideas with students too this is a program we've used in the past Yes, we have used this for the prior three years. And it's been well received? Yes, I would say it's um, overwhelmingly favored by elementary teachers because it not only has easy, accessible tools for students, but there is a content library where we can share district shared resources as well as things from um, the larger community within Seesaw. This is a K through five? This is K through five, yep. Can pre-K? We do have some schools that purchase for pre-K independently, so Bunch, Whitney Young, they have that as well for their pre-K students. There is a free version that our other pre-Ks um, also access. Thank you. Any other questions? Thanks, Shannon. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Uh, top Cat Hybrid Speaker System, and. Oh, did I miss one? Oh, sorry. Info for displays. And thank you. It is recommended that the board <coughs> approve the purchase of 546 info board displays from Primex Wireless Inc. of Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, for $477,348.57. This purchase provides info board displays throughout all 11 middle schools and four of our five high schools. Southside is already equipped with the info boards from a previous purchase earlier this year. These networked low power displays will be mounted in common spaces and will allow for critical alerts, general messaging, and synchronized time to be shown on them. Included in this purchase is a critical notification panel that will be installed in the main office. This panel can be customized to allow a pre-configured custom message, customized message to be displayed on all info boards within each individual school with the press of a single button. FWCS was able to secure pricing that is 31.6% below PEPPM cooperative contract pricing. Indiana the law does not require public bidding for purchases made through approved cooperative purchasing <coughs> entities. Funding will come from the Elementary and Secondary Emergency Relief or ESSER grant and Kevin Grubel, uh, Manager of Technology, will be here to answer questions. Thanks, Ann. Is there a motion on the floor? So motion. Second. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> um, any questions for Kevin? So are these just like an announcement board? Or? So these are kind of digital boards that will be mounted in the hallways. Uh, they're probably about five to six inches tall, probably 12 to 15 inches wide or long. Uh, and they, they will uh, present a digital message on there. Uh, so in the case of some of like the alerts and things, we could, uh, with the panel in the office, with the touch of a button, splash up, lock down, lock out, weather, uh, popcorn, 75 cents, uh, for all clear, whatever messages we wanted to put up there. So it would uh, be for general announcements or emergency types? Absolutely. As well as Southside is using it as kind of a countdown 
to the next bell to try to get kids to a class on time. Clever. Who has access to putting the message in? Uh, it'll be in a controlled space in the, in the office. Uh, so the administration will be the ones that uh, customize the message and then it's stored in the cloud and then the panel can retrieve one of those messages if they do. In the case that it's an emergency or a lockdown of some sort or something, is, does anyone have access to being able to uh, alert that on that board other than the office? It depends upon where the panel is installed at. So if it's behind a locked door, only people with keys to that locked door can access the panel. Uh, so I'll, I'll lean on the security department for place, placement of that or for the building administration for placement of the panel. So we're getting 546 of these? Yep. So the manufacturer calls for a, a, a display board every 100 feet um, or every 60 feet. Uh, we backed off due to the amount of, of boards. We backed off to 100 feet, which spread them out a little bit more throughout the building. Uh, the visibility of these signs can easily be seen at 100 feet. Uh, they are color, so you could put different colored messages on them, uh, and they're pretty good size to see. So it'll be like hanging from the ceiling or hanging against the wall down along the hallway? Correct. Yeah, so if you're familiar with walking down the hallways, you'll see the Primex clocks, the round clock mm -hmm. on the wall. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, all, that's all kept in time with radio frequencies. These, these display boards will be replacing some of those. Uh, and then it also is controlled through the radio frequency uh, as far as accurate time throughout the building and then the messages, of course. How many are currently installed in Southside? Oh, trivia Four. question one. Kevin may fail. Um, <laughs> are they every 100 feet? <laughs> there, I like that answer. <laughs> I don't have the exact number. I'm sorry. That's okay. I mean, are they, are they set up similar to what we're looking at putting in our other schools then every, they every are. 100 so feet? Yes. Who creates the content? Uh, it's up to the building administration. Uh, so they'll have access to the web portal, uh, to the vendor software that's in the cloud, and then they can, they can pull those messages down. Are we going to pay a maintenance fee to the company for that portal, access to the portal and all the content? There is a little annual maintenance on the side of that, and then we'll cover that in our department uh, maintenance, fund, maintenance fund. Got it. Thank you. Any other questions for have you had any other problems with the ones at south side have we had how, how obviously it's good enough to present to us to yeah. put them in the other ones but i mean have there been any technical issues with them so we've not run anything yet we kind of like this set it and forget it technology where we configure it once and we don't mm -hmm. have to worry about it too much so are they getting to class on time <laughs> only power school attendance will tell that and i don't have that knowledge so <laughs> Nice. Any other questions? Thanks, Kevin. Yeah. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, I will do the next one. Uh, it is recommended that the board approve the purchase of 160 TopCat hybrid speaker systems from Lightspeed Technologies, Inc. Oh, man. Of Tulu Latin? Sure. Sure. Oregon. <laughs> For $199,360. This purchase provides a top cat hybrid speaker system for 62 elementary classrooms, 33 elementary art rooms, 50 media centers, and 15 additional units to be used throughout the district as needed. The hybrid speaker system delivers superior audio quality of voice and multimedia in an all-in-one easy design. Included in this purchase is a wireless microphone that can enhance the speaking voice within uh, the space. FWCS was able to secure pricing that was 12.8% below PE PPM, Cooperative Contract Pricing, Indiana law does not require public bidding for purchases made through approved cooperative purchasing entities. Funding will come from the ESSER grant, and Kevin Grubel, Manager of Technology, will be here to answer any questions. Is there a motion on the floor? So moved. Thanks, Ann. Second. Thanks, Jen. Uh, any questions for Kevin? What do we use now? 
So in, in a lot of our elementary classrooms, we already have these amplified speaker systems in place. Uh, we purchased them in May of 22 with title funds. Uh, this order is kind of going back and repopulating those missed spaces. Uh, so in elementaries, we already have these in place. Uh, many teachers are already using the microphones throughout the last school year. Uh, and a lot of the um, special needs and in the larger spaces where these were installed at, that amplified voice really brings in instruction, uh, allows a little bit more um, clarity uh, to the instructions given to the kiddos. And the response was that everybody liked them, they were easy to use and... Yes. Yeah, so they're, well. they're, so these speakers are kind of an, an always on uh, and then the microphone has an on off switch. So the thing it has to do is pull the microphone off the charger, turn it on and they're talking through, through the speaker in the classroom. Hmm. So, so are you saying that all of our elementary classrooms have this currently and we're just replacing some of them? So when we made the purchase back in May of 22, we based that off of the 21-22 school year core subject classroom count. <coughs> Since then, we've added a few allocations. We've moved classrooms around within the buildings and now we're looking to expand this into the larger spaces like uh, media centers um, in, in trying to saturate uh, those missed spaces. So, so is that a yes, every elementary? I can't, I, I can't say every single classroom has it, but where there's a core subject class taught, they should have it by the end of this purchase. A core subject class. Uh, so I any classroom with five or more kids is kind of what we're using as the as the number to go off, go off of. So that's, that's probably what I don't know five five six hundred classroom spaces. Um, I would let's see probably. I'm just saying a rough thirty. Yeah, twenty classrooms in elementary, thirty elementary, six hundred each, something like that. Okay. So what, just to make sure I understand it clearly, back in May of 2022, that was the goal to put it in every core classroom. And now, since we've done shifting and expanding, we're trying to cover those along with media centers and art rooms or other classrooms so that every classroom that children sit in is now going to be equipped with this technology. Is that Th that's correct, correct yes. Mm -hmm. This is in gym classes? Uh, typically, most of the gyms have an audit have an audio system component to them already uh, so these would not be in the gymnasiums uh, that space is too big for these amplified speakers we'd have to go to a, more of a sound system it is all designed to make to allow the teacher to speak maybe a lower voice but the kids to hear everything is that correct yeah so the teacher is not going to need to shout so it's basically just like the microphone here in front of me i'm speaking in a normal voice but using electronics to amplify so this kind of off the subject but on the subject hmm? And I don't know what it's called, but there are some systems for children who have hearing disabilities that the wiring runs through the ceiling or whatever, and it's certain technology that goes directly to their hearing. Do we have any of that kind of equipment in our any of our schools? I don't. I know it has a special name to it. Nikki might know. The <laughs> students that have um, cochlear implants, we we can pick up the FM receivers and that frequency then is wired um, by the audiologist um, to pick up the frequency. And these devices, I have been in classrooms this year where the teacher is using this and a child with a cochlear implant can hear. And those are clear. separate from <coughs> our speaker system. They can't, they can't tune into the no, wavelength? they can. They can? Yes, they can. Okay. Yeah, these speakers that are in the, at least in the classrooms I have been in are um, the volume is loud, I mean not too loud, but loud enough and clear. And then also it's about where that student, we may want to have that student um, sit in preferential seating um, so they can pick up, you know, the sounds of that is any type of an issue. Thank Sorry, you. Kevin, does that? No, hey, I appreciate the backup, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> any other questions? Thanks, Kevin. Yep. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> Rally, can you do the food, beverage, and bread? Sure. It is recommended that an award be made to the lowest responsible and responsive bidders meeting specifications and quality standards. So for the food bid, there were five different companies. 
um, Gordon Food Services, Grand Rapids, Michigan, Stance Food Service, South Bend, Indiana, <coughs> Commercial Food Service, and Piazza Produce of Indianapolis, and Prairie Farms of Fort Wayne, totaling $6,492,487.28. For beverages, we have three companies, Commercial Food Systems of Indianapolis, Gordon Food Service of Grand Rapids, Michigan, and Prairie Farms of Fort Wayne, Indiana, totaling $630,266.40. And a bread bid for um, one company, Alpha Baking Company, <coughs> excuse me, Indianapolis, Indiana, totaling $161,284. The food portion of the bid is for items to be used in the school lunch program at the Nutrition Process Center and the 17 cooking kitchens from August 1st, 2023 through July 31st, 2024. The bid items include, the bid includes items such as fruits, vegetables, meat, and staples such as flour, sugar, and salt. The beverage portion of the bid is for bottled water and juice. The bread portion of the bid is for buns, rolls, and bread. Some items were withdrawn for, from the bid because of the menu changes, the receipt of government commodities, or the absence of an acceptable bid. Invitations to bid were mailed to 27 prospective bidders. Six responded to the food portion, and five were recommended for some portion of the bid. Five responded to the beverage portion, and three were recommended for some portion of the bid. One responded to the bread portion and was awarded the bid. Felipe Guerrera, Director of Nutrition Services, is available to answer any questions. Thanks, Raleigh. Is there a motion on the floor? So moved. Second. Thanks, <clears throat> thanks, Steve. Any questions for Felipe? Felipe, I cannot believe that the Wholesome Bakery, about five blocks south of here, did not respond to your bid. <laughs> <laughs> so on paper it says, I will be answering some of the questions we're going to team tag. She's Lila, she's our purchasing agent, so. Got it. Hello. Um, the bakery quit making food, uh, school food products is why they do not bid on our, on our bid. Is it just sandwich bread? And, uh, buns, whole wheat buns, whole wheat hot dog buns, whole wheat hamburger Real buns. Real sophisticated stuff. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they quit uh, about three years ago, they quit bidding on our bid. Oh, oh wow. Is there any new vendor in the mix that you're recommending here? They're all people who provided us food in the past. Yes, so uh, we have a couple new ones, but it's for the uh, disposables. Um, and that's gonna come later for, for the food bid. It's about the same. Thank you. And Felipe, everybody is um, feeling the pinch of the increased food cost. Um, how much has our, our Grocery bill increased um, from last year to this year. So interestingly enough, uh, the food portion it is it went down two percent, okay. but the beverage went down uh, was twenty five, and then the bread went up about ten percent. Oh, wow. So it it went up significantly in some areas, but then some of the other areas like the disposables and the supplies they went down significantly. <laughs> so. You know, all in all, it's about 5% less than last year. Okay. But the food, beverage, and <coughs> bread portion kind of went all over the place. Um, so. Good for us. So this will be enough supplies for the whole school year? Yes. Get your menu set and ready to go. Yes. That's impressive. <laughs> and you, it says there are uh, menu changes. Is there anything exciting that kids can <laughs> in these menu changes? Well, that was my promise, right? <laughs> um, so, um, I don't know if you, you guys have heard, but this summer we're piloting a coffee bar in our high schools. Um, when you compare the participation from last year, and it, summer program was a little, a little different last year, um, but we have more enrollment this year, so the number kind of went down when you compare, you know, apples to apples, but when you compare participation against participation, it's about up 75%. Uh, so that's, it, it's quite a bit, and uh, we're trying to figure out the details, how this is going to work during the regular school year, because right now it's a scaled-down version <laughs> of our program, but we're really excited, and the students, they love it. They, they really like it. A lot of positive feedback. And uh, since high schoolers will be going a little earlier next year, 
Mm -hmm. um, might as well try to help them out somehow. <laughs> and if we can provide a breakfast of that quality, uh, which is comparable, you know, we've received feedback that you know it's very comparable to Starbucks and stuff like that. Um, if we can provide something and not charge, and have a nutritional quality that's superior, uh, I see no contention about that. <laughs> yeah. That's exciting. exciting yeah. yeah. Yes. So that, that's the first step. We're going to try different things throughout the school year. We're going to make it flexible enough that we can pilot different programs and uh, offer different things so we can try to figure out what's the right mix of different items and different offerings for all grades. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the key pieces is going to be how this food bid looks like. Because um, we want to do something, but we may be limited to what we have available. So we're going to have to get real creative. It's a good challenge. <laughs> awesome. Can you come and negotiate my grocery bill for me? <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Anytime. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. You bought $7 million of food a year. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I bought that today. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. Thanks, Felipe. Yeah. And I just want to point out that, again, when you compare last year's bid with this year's, the whole bid, it's about 600000 less oh than last year. So the team, they did an incredible work um, bringing everything down. And again, we go with the lowest and most re responsible bidder. Uh, so we went and made changes, and they did an awesome job just putting everything down. And again, it looks fantastic. That's Great. a fantastic achievement. Great work. Good job. Thank you. Awesome. Any other questions? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> okay. Um, that leads us to milk. Noah? My favorite product. It is recommended that the, an award be made to the lowest responsible and responsible bidder meaning specifications, quality standards, and complete dairy service. This bid is awarded based on three categories of half pint containers which include 1% white, fat-free chocolate, and skim milk. The company awarded a recommendation to its Prairie Farms Dairy in Fort Wayne, Indiana, for a total of $1.173998 million. Half pints of milk estimated at $5.7 million annually represent about 9% of total dairy purchases for FWCS schools and other potentially vendor programs. Other dairy items such as yogurt, cottage cheese, and larger units of milk will also be provided in, are in addition to the cost above. The bid is for one-year contract with the option to renew. During a year, the price fluctuates as allowed in the contract. The price change is based on the United States Department of Agriculture's monthly increase or decrease of the cost per hundred weight of Class One skim milk and Class One butterfat of FWCS suppliers. If invitations to bid were mailed to two prospective bidders with one responding, that being again Prairie Farms Dairy, purchasing uh, $337,260 of 1% uh, white milk, $830,940 of chocolate milk fat-free, we can see what the kids like, and then $5,798 of skim milk, I think they have voted. <laughs> the total for this bid is approximately 10.32% increase from compared to the current contract and pricing. Again, Felipe and his team are here to, to answer questions. Thanks, Noah. Is there a motion on the floor? I'll move. Second. Thanks, Anne. Thanks, Noah. Any questions for Felipe? I do have one. As my daughter's dietary needs have changed into becoming vegan, if we looked into soy or almond milk at all, <coughs> or other alternatives, I don't know all the alternatives, but I also know a vegan. Oh, no. oh, yeah. yeah, she can expound on that, I'm sure. Yes, we do offer alternatives. We also always have uh, juice available, um, but we also have soy milk available. Mm -hmm. And that would be separate from this? Yes, that's on the food bed. It's in the food bed. And is that available at all of our schools, elementary, middle, and high? <laughs> so um, per USDA, you have to have a substitute that's comparable to the nutritional quality of regular milk. Mm -hmm. And the only one approved is soy milk. Um, so that's why we offer soy milk. It's a little bit pricier, but it comes when it's requested. So okay. we don't make it yeah. widely available yet. Don't quote me on that, but um, we make it available for request when the kids or students they have dietary restrictions or they may have some sort of preference. Um, yeah. Thanks. I just like to comment that I'm glad that it was Prairie Farms that one and that they're local. I just it makes my heart happy when we have local vendors. So, uh, any other questions? 
If a lunch buddy requests a vegan meal, <laughs> <laughs> could you accommodate? <laughs> yeah, we're working on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you have that up and running, let me know. <laughs> All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> All right. Steve, cafeteria disposables. It's recommended that an award be made to the lowest responsible and responsive bidders meeting specifications and quality standards for cafeteria disposables. And you see the three companies recommended, Acorn Distributors, uh, price $227,560, Form Plastics out of St. Charles, Illinois, $110,104.46. And Pathways Solutions from Dublin, Ohio, $523,480.55. Total $861, $145, $1 for those items. Uh, bid for cafeteria disposable products um, includes plastic, aluminum, and pressed paperboard containers to be used at the Nutrition Process Center. And we had sent out um, invitations to bid to 23 prospective bidders. Six responded. Felipe is still standing in front of us for any questions from us. Thanks, Steve. Is there a motion on the floor? We we'll approve. Second. Thanks, Noah. Thanks, Anne. Any questions for Felipe? So you mentioned that. These are new companies that we're going to be working with than we have prior in the past. <laughs> um, yeah, so it was, it's not that they're new, but you know it changes every year. Um, so last year we didn't award anything to Acorn, but this year we did. Um, last year we didn't award anything to Form Plastics, but we did this year. Um, and then the other ones that were there last year. So it kind of looks different every year, depending on what they bid, how they bid, and it was a little crazy this year with some of the bidding for this specific one. Uh, some trades just went up exponentially for some, and some other companies just stay where they are. Um, so it was very interesting. So from last year, it was about 1.2 million, and right now it's about 860,000. That's great. And I told you I would always ask, so um, are, are any of our cafeteria disposables recyclable or compostable? And I think I know your answer, but. Due to the special way we need to pack at Nutrition Services and the, blunt, the production lines they go on and how they have to be heated and um, handling through refrigeration, at this time we cannot find a, um, a package that we can use in that uh, and as in like recycling at the schools it involves so much at the schools to do it they have to clean all the food out of and then store it and stuff like that so that goes to a whole nother factor not us <laughs> but we'll, if we ever find one that is um, reusable in there we would definitely have it so we could use it but it doesn't work in the facility we have got it thank you um, any other questions Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, any opposed? Sorry. No? Okay. Julie, can you do the paper and supplies? It's recommended that an award be made to the lowest responsible and responsive bidders meeting specifications and quality standards. And uh, Acorn Distributors, uh, $718,376. Gordon Food Service, $63,924, some change. Janitor Supply out of Fort Wayne, $28,371 and some change for a total of $810,672.37. This bid is for cafeteria papers and supplies such as bags, gloves, aprons, trays, and paper products to be used at the Nutrition Process Center and our schools. Uh, invitations were mailed to 18 prospective bidders with four responding. 
and our question answers are still here. Great. Is there a motion on the floor? Move for approval. Second. Second. Thanks, Julie. Thanks, Ann. Any questions? You want to give us the comparison between last year and this year? <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great, by the way. So. Uh, last year was uh, about a million dollars. This year is 800. See, we need yeah. to have you stand up here more often then. <laughs> Everyone's been less. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> right. Sorry, Darren left too early to take notes. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Because <laughs> it's completely in his control, I know. <laughs> yeah. So bids were mailed out to 18 prospective bidders with only four responding. Is that just the sheer quantity of things that we're ordering that only certain vendors can meet our needs or? Yeah. yeah. My add on to that, I believe that because it's still a pretty volatile market that we had a lot less wanting to commit. So it. It, yeah. it drew it back some, which look more people are like, cause they're familiar with us. You know, stuck with us and came through. Awesome. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thanks for being here to answer all of our questions. We Thank appreciate you. you. Okay. And now we are to the School Safety Operating Referendum Tax Levy Fund Resolution 2024. It is recommended that the board approve a resolution to approve that a public question appear on the ballot at the general election to be held on November 7th, 2023 to raise funds for safety and well-being expenditures. The resolution also recommends a maximum tax rate of 10 cents per $100 of assessed value and a corresponding revenue spending plan. It is the desire of the board to provide schools with a safer environment. The board has conducted five informational meetings and has received feedback to assist with the plan. Dr. Mark Daniel, superintendent, will make a presentation regarding the proposed referendum. Matt Schiebel, executive director of safety and community partnerships, and Michael Manuel, uh, director of security, will also be available to answer any questions. Okay, well, thank you, Madam President. So let's begin with our presentation. And this will be a brief presentation similar to what we've had at our various, uh, our five other sites. So first of all, as we looked into this scenario, we did see that approximately, and these are pretty much national standards as well, about 80% of our parents and say, as well as uh, you know, our students say, staff members know safety procedures. This is usually about what we see. And again, that made us think, okay, what is it that we're actually trying to attain here? And the number one goal is to provide a more proactive, uh, safe environment in our, <coughs> in our buildings. So with that said, Yes, you know, every day you pick up the newspaper or you're on the news and you'll see something that's happening in our country. Um, so it's not just in our country, it's worldwide, it seems. And the point is this. The point is, what are we going to do, again, to be proactive, not reactive? So we convened a committee and Charles Kamek helped lead that committee but also now we have Matt and Michael uh, as well. And I believe David Amon also was part of the visitation of some other districts across uh, in both uh, Chicago, <coughs> Hammond, um, Jay County as well. But this committee, as you can see, included, I'll say the who's who of our community in regards to this particular issue. So you see our city and county law enforcement, so that was both Fort Wayne PD, uh, police chief for his designee, as well as our sheriff, Valen County. We had judicial members present, and that would be um, the judge who is solely responsible for juvenile uh, students and, and youth. So she was present. We had our faith-based organizations or ministers. We had mental health 
professionals. Fort Wayne United, as you know, 10-point coalition. So again, neighborhood associations, also our teachers association, and various other community advocates. So during the course of these meetings, and there are several of those, the recommendation from that committee was this. You need to do really two things. You need to increase personnel with specific functions to ensure or to improve safety, as well as you need to enhance your technology. So thus, that's where we are today in regards to our referendum, because you have to also find a revenue stream. So this is uh, a school safety referendum. It is, uh, you have to meet one of the nine criteria there, and if approved, funds are available for eight years. So, now that we're at this stage, what we're recommending, again, 10 cents is what you'll be asked to approve, and these are still estimates, but we also need to show you line items. So very briefly, you see the revenue. Again, that is the 10 cent tax rate. The first year that would yield about 12.2 million. And then you have the expenditure budget. We have had some increases in some of those numbers. Again, this is how we maximize the spending. This is not necessarily what you would eventually approve. However, we need to show that we can, we have uh, those monies allocated. So um, you'll see the increase in school resource officers. So currently we have nine, we'll increase those by 12. We'll increase the security personnel. Currently we have three, we'll add additional three. Then we get into some of what I call the major personnel expenses, which are the student advocates and mental health therapists, student advocates in every one of our buildings, mental health therapists now in all of our buildings because we currently have them in elementary. And then you see the additional mental health supports. We'll be working on what that may look like as well as, and we have some representatives here today from a live community outreach. So again, those are the peacemakers and then additional funding into equipment and technology. So that's how we come up with the total there of 12.2 million. So as we've been saying, the average homestead property value in FWCS is 167,000. That's an estimated maximum cost per year of about $76. So you have now safer schools, $76 on the average homestead property value. This is the ballot language. I will not read that to you, but you now can see what those percentages uh, Kathy Friend has completed those, and that's what those would then. This is the actual ballot language. Timeline is today you're voting, voting on do you carry forward with this resolution? <coughs> then the key number there, the key date is 11 7. There will be an election, so we'll take it to our community. And that's the gist of it. So if you do have any questions, we do have Matt and Michael here to help and answer any questions you may have. Can you go back to the slides to the yep. expenditures there? So this is 12.2 million per year. So this is the first year, 2024. Every year will vary based on what's the assessed value of properties. Again, We'll treat one year at a time, although we have looked at a five-year plan. Um, so that would be the maximum amount we'd be able to receive the first year in 2024. We have not yet brought to you exactly what that will be, what we'll ask for. Other questions, comments? And there's flexibility the way that we've structured it so that if we find that um, cost is not as high as we anticipated, we can always go less than that 10 cents. Is that right, Kathy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in 
fact, the first year, um, and this is something that we'll have to talk about before the budget, because the budget for 24 will be approved before the vote. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you have to pay. You have to approve this resolution today <coughs> to state which you want the maximum rate to be. When we bring the budget, it can be either this number or it could be a lower number. So, um, and that date, I believe, is October the 9th was um, the date that we had on there for the budget approval. So, um, for instance, when we talked about this originally, there were some, we thought there might be some of these positions we can't get it implemented quick enough, maybe, so that some of that cost maybe wouldn't come in play until 25 instead of in 24. And, so, um, so there could be there could be a reduction here to a lower tax rate than ten cents the first year, but this gives us the the flexibility to do that. So, and you have to create this spending plan every year, but you do it at budget time, so it'll match in the future. The spending plan will match what you're what you're asking for in the budget. In this case, it we have to go sooner in order to get it on the ballot. Mm -hmm. We've identified all the line items that we might possibly, we've identified them, it's included, um, but not necessarily when we consider this every year, have to vote the maximum amount or every amount that we've identified. Mm -hmm. Yes. And can you put up the ballot language? <coughs> And Kathy, I know that we had to um, decide on an amount or a tax amount. And I noticed that neither one of the numbers on there are 10%. So as a voter. It's 10 cents, not 10%. So that's what changes the. Got it. Okay. Overall, I just know it's confusing. So it is. And that's and, unfortunate. And, and besides that, that only reflects our portion of the tax bill, not their entire tax mm -hmm. bill. So mm -hmm. it's very misleading for a taxpayer to read that. That's not how high their tax bill is going to go up in total, only our portion of it. Got it. Okay. I've really appreciated the amount of work um, that the superintendent and his staff have um, taken to listen to voters and parents and that it's all, not all about security and police officers, but mental health, agencies like Alive Community Outreach. Uh, and I like that mix. You really, this is serious business. Yeah. And for $6 a month, what a deal. I agree with you, Steve, because uh, when you look at that budget, it's almost, it was 12 million something and almost 10 million of that goes to personnel, people who will support our students. And um, you know, I think that's going to just do wonders for our kids overall. Um, yes, we will have safer buildings, but I think our, our, all of our kids will benefit from getting those additional people um, to build relationships with. Because when we had those security meetings that Dr. Daniel mentioned, that was what, what popped up over and over again is relationships with our students. So I think this will definitely help. If this gets approved in November, how soon would that hiring of uh, personnel listed there, how soon would that take place? Well, we can start to spend money in January. Granted, we won't get our first property tax dollars until we, we get an advance okay. in May and June and then the rest of it. And, but that's how all of our property tax funds operate. So right. we, will, we will probably start hiring in January. Um, but, you know, there may be a there may be a, a way that this is staged so that some uh, the majority don't start maybe until the fall when the school year starts and okay. so yeah but we we will have access to dollars starting at the beginning of the year okay. I guess I'm in favor of this and um, Ann was very uh, accommodative to attend many of these meetings and shared with us some of the experiences and I, I agree with Steve and appreciate Dr. Daniels and the rest of the team of all the hard effort and work that's gone into this um, and the community members. Um, I know Mitch McKinney from the Fort Wayne City Police Department met with us a number of times. Judge Andrew Trevino, as you mentioned, met with us a number of times. 
uh, many pastors and other community members. Um, it's no secret, unfortunately, particularly in the fall, we had a number of gun um, situations at our schools, but I think as Ann said to us that you learned over that time, that it's the relationships. And we were very fortunate that while guns were found that no, nothing of harm came is because students told an adult or students told another friend who told an adult. And so it's that trust. Um, as we ended the nearing of the final bit of the school year, um, and, and my youngest is a senior, um, I couldn't help but think I don't have to worry about that anymore, um, which is not a fun thing to think about. Uh, I couldn't help but think to say to some of my friends who are teachers or principals or working in the schools, hey, you made it. And we still had another events to go, including graduations, um, which just last week, I think there was a shooting at a graduation. Um, unfortunately, it's a sad reality that we live in. Um, I'm saddened by um, the state and federal um, legislators not taking any action on this uh, point in particular. And so I think it's incumbent upon us. I think our citizenry will support this. I'm very hopeful, obviously. Um, but as Dr. Dino said in the presentation, this is about being proactive. It's not a matter if, it's a matter of when. Um, what can we do to, to avoid that at all costs? And I don't want to be part of a board that doesn't do any, everything we can, or part of a community that doesn't do everything we can to help um, our students, our staff, and our faculty um, have the best environment that they're in. So I'll support this. Can we recognize, I would like to recognize um, the alive board members. We have Lynn Gilmore is in the audience and Doug Worthington. And I don't remember your name. Angela. 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 Okay. Well, thank you for coming. And they've been just so very supportive throughout this entire process. We, we really appreciate your support. And we talked about relationships. And I know that, I don't know if Doug is, but I know that Lynn is a part of the peacemakers have the is it Grammy and Grandpa? Grammy and, Grammy and Grandpa. <laughs> right. So Lynn is making those relationships with our South Side students. So we appreciate that as well. Thank you for being here. I also just want to say that this is, uh, you know, the referendum is to make our school safer. And hopefully we, it'll get passed and we'll have so much money to really work on the mental health of students, unfortunately. The things that go on in the world show up really, they really show up in our schools and in our kids. And if we can get the kids some of the help that they need with the therapists and things like that, hopefully it will impact our community in general. So it's not just about our schools, because I know sometimes people think, oh, I don't have kids in schools. That doesn't affect me. But everything that happens with the kids in our schools affects our entire community. So. I'm really, really hopeful that this passes because we, we really need this and not just for our schools, but for our community. I'd like to couple that with exactly what Raleigh just said. Is there are so many of us, um, or so many citizens out there that don't have children in Fort Wayne Community Schools or in school at all. But the impact that that makes, because what our goal is in school is to get these children through high school and out there to be a productive citizen in our community. And we see mental health problems everywhere. We see it at, in every business that we work in, every place that we go. Um, I'm sure you have one time or other saw some disruption in a grocery store or a, you know, in the mall or wherever you're at. And the more we can do to help our support our children while they're in school and we have some kind of control of where they're at and what they're learning and, and, and helping them and supporting them is a benefit to our community because they will leave our doors. And we always are always about what they do next once they leave our doors. That's what we've been saying. It's, it's what the next step is. And the next step is to be a valuable community member. And the more mental health supports and just support of our general community helping our children and knowing that they're there for them, I believe 100% that that's going to help our community as a whole. And as I sit in leadership meetings with um, our, our community leaders and workforce development and everything, I think about those things. I think about what are, what are we doing now to help grow our city and support our city? Well, like we have millions of dollars coming in, building brand new buildings and bringing new people in town. We want all of our students 
to be those productive citizens. So anything that the community can do to support us, to support them, is supporting our community as a whole. Yeah. And I would add that we have been very fortunate and blessed that our community has supported us um, on three <clears throat> construction referendums. Um, and, uh, but I would say that this is just as important, if not more. I mean, the construction referendums, those are investments in buildings. This is an investment in uh, children. And a lot of these children and students end up living, working in our community. So this is really uh, a vote for an investment in the future of our community. And I'll just add briefly, um, I do hear a lot from constituents in the community that say, oh, I don't have students in the district. But I, we can't forget about the 4,000 employees that we also have that this is going to affect. Those are our neighbors. Those are our family members. Those are our friends. And we don't want anything to happen to them either. So while you may not have a student in our district, I bet you have a friend or a family member who work for us. And don't you want them to go to work at a safe environment? And so, um, yes, we want all children to be safe. But I have lots of friends and uh, family that work in our district, and I want to make sure that they're also safe as well. So keep that in mind. Um, do we want to do a roll call vote or is a regular vote okay Kathy mm -hmm. yeah okay regular votes okay thank you David all right so all of those in favor of approving do we need to move to approve or first get the vote oh yeah we probably need a motion yes I move approve, thanks. Madam President. I second thanks Noah thanks Raleigh thanks David <laughs> for being here and keeping me on track. Mm -hmm. um, all those in favor of approving the resolution to approve that the public question appear on the ballot at the general election on November 7th, 2023. Vote aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. That ends our business portion of the meeting. Um, next up, we have board member comments. Uh, <clears throat> three comments here. First of all, I um, just wanted to pay my respects to a longtime Fort Wayne Community School employee, Will Dorman, who was in public education for 42 years, many of those with us at Wayne High School, a math teacher and longtime basketball coach, and his service was today. Um, there is a, a webinar later this week um, from Edunomics, and I heard this speaker, she's from an economist from Georgetown University, and did you folks get this notice? If not, I'll send it to you, but it's, um, her pitch is districts now have more staff than ever and fewer students. It's about the, the ESSER money. Uh, when mm -hmm. we heard her at a conference in Washington, D.C., in January, she was fabulous. So I think she's going to cover the same ground. And I know we're looking um, at this issue. And uh, if you have time and you really don't have to be a part of the board, it's open to anybody. Um, but I will send it to board members and make sure that others have information on that. Um, the, the last item I wanted to talk about was something we talked about in our meeting prior to this one. and it, has to do with um, black student achievement. Every year we publish a full page ad in the Journal Gazette listing our top 50 scholars. And these are kids that worked really, really hard over their high school career to be in the top 50. Unfortunately, um, there is an underrepresentation of black students in that top 50, and it's been so for a very long time. Um, and we need to fix that. We need to change it. Um, we looked at some initial data, but we need to gather more. Um, and one of the things, when I asked our high school principals if they could um, tell me the number of black valedictorians and salutatorians, some schools said we're still waiting for our first black valedictorian. 
and that's unacceptable. But we have to pull together as a district to figure out how we raise that, because at the same time, black student achievement at our highest levels in our classes is low. We see other students of color, Burmese and Latinos, many of them who come to this country without speaking the English language, and yet they make the commitment to study, learn, and they're right at the top. And we need our black students there too. So, um, you know, hopefully we'll figure this out. Um, I'm not going to give you my opinion because I pulled out a quote that I shared with the board and the superintendent, and it's from Edward Deming who said, without data, you're just another person with an opinion. And so we need to gather more data and more insight, bring in our people from our buildings, and we need to ask our students too, that they have to work harder too, to, to be a part of um, the highest levels of our, of our, um, our, our classes. So anyway, I'm, I'm optimistic that we're gonna figure this out. Um, <clears throat> just enjoyed being part of uh, graduations last week. The, the Fort Wayne Virtual Academy at gra at graduation was really interesting. Um, and believe me, those students and families were just as excited, um, you know, as our other uh, graduations. But it was really, it was just really interesting to, to attend that one. Um, <clears throat> but hopefully everyone's having an enjoyable summer. And I know a lot of things going on this summer as far as programs for <coughs> students and teachers. And so, um, and we'll be busy too, won't we, Matt? Yes, we will. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, I want to, you know, congratulate everybody. I had a graduating senior this year, so it was very special to be able to um, give her a hug up there on stage. Um, but it was even more exciting to shake every one of those children's hands who walked through. It's a very special feeling. Um, you can look out in the audience and see all the parents so proud, but just being there. And um, I have to give kudos to Dr. Daniel and Dr. Robbins, who were probably there at everyone and shaking everyone's hand because even going through a couple of them, that's a lot of hands. Um, but I do congratulate all the parents, all the family who's, you know, got their kids to that point. And obviously all of our teachers and all of the staff and administration who work day in and day out, including our food services and every last employee in our in our um, district that deserves the kudos for getting those kids across that stage. Um, I think it's it's we all should be and you all, not me, but you all should be proud. Um, but I did hear one thing that I would like everybody else to know about that maybe we can touch on at another time. But there are a few schools, elementary schools that I hear are piloting a learning lab for teachers. And I am really excited about this. And I think that hopefully Dr. Daniel can share later on with us. Just I wanted to bring it up so that we all have that at the top of our head. Um, there's some exciting things going on that some of our leadership, our, our principals have put together to help um, enhance and grow their programs in their school. And it's exciting when you hear um, people collaborating and working together and wanting to do different things and something different that we haven't done in the past. So hopefully we'll hear a little bit more about that later, but um, I just wanted to remember to do that. So um, thank you all. And um, I hope everybody is out there enjoying themselves and having a great summer so far. I'll just echo you on uh, congratulating all of our graduates. The uh, first day of school and graduations are probably the highlights of being a board member. So it's, it's always um, exciting to uh, watch all of our graduates walk through and the excited families and all that and um, the virtual academy Julie that was really interesting as well to recognize just that that small group of students but they graduated as well so they need that just like everybody else um, but I believe that is all my comments for this evening thanks yeah Raleigh I attended graduations along with the other board members last week, and uh, it's always just, it's always so touching. It's 
such a great experience. I smile so hard that my, my teeth get dry. And, um, so just congratulations to all the graduates. Congratulations to the families that supported those graduates and the teachers who and the administrators who also helped su to support um, that achievement. I do want to thank Steve for bringing up um, the comment about black student achievement. One of the first meetings that I had with him, he brought out his newspaper clipping and he showed me um, and it's something that we've had a conversation about before. Um, it's something that someone could actually and probably has written a, a whole PhD, you know, about black student achievement. I don't think it's fair to compare black students to other um, demographics just because of the, um, the history of the country and just different experiences that people have. I'm glad that you brought it. I'm glad that it's going to be a focus. I know we have a new DEI component that I'm sure we'll be um, evaluating. And there are so many reasons and so many things that go into student achievement in general. So I'm glad that Steve and, and other board members are committed to, you know, really analyzing the data, um, determining what resources we need, um, and committing to all student achievement, but focusing on why certain students aren't achieving at the level that we would like them to. I just want to reiterate what everybody said about congratulating the graduates of 2023, and particularly Alexi Mathias and Arianne Smith. And I'll leave it there. <laughs> Dr. Dane. So I'd also like to thank the board for attending those graduations. I know it's, uh, they're, they're, uh, they're not always your kids, but they are all of our kids. So. At the same time, I also would like to thank the, the support staff who, you know, made sure our gowns were there and uh, we had a couple of lunches and, you know, that sort of thing. Um, they're sort of in the background. You don't see them, but folks, they are, they are very, very important. And then also, you know, our students, uh, behavior was impeccable. So, again... Thank you to our students, our graduates, our new alum, and again, we've said you're still part of Fort Wayne Community Schools. There are, uh, again, we, we want you to return and mentor and, and be part of our, our, our moving forward with what we're trying to do. And lastly, I had the opportunity to be at uh, General Motors this morning and talking with some of their leadership on how we can partner with them and again, the skill sets they were talking about had nothing to do with math, English, social studies, or science. It were, they, they were the soft skills, problem solving, collaboration, being on time, and so on and so forth. So um, it's exciting when you have that kind of investment in your community because that tells you our community is doing things that are second to none. And you know, $632 million is substantial. But as I said, the human capital lies within our schools. And again, that importance of partnering and moving our kids forward. And yes, they need a livable wage and something that will keep them in Fort Wayne. So thank you. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that I will add to the graduation thing, like Raleigh said, her teeth got dry. My face hurt <laughs> from smiling. I had to keep like relaxing my cheeks because um, it was just but uh, genuinely excited. Um, I'm just always touched by the passion and enthusiasm of our families. Um, they're just so excited. And I remember that excitement um, when I graduated, when my sisters graduated. So just always um, touching to be around um, all of the emotions that surround graduation. Um, and I don't know if anybody else follows the College and Career Readiness um, program, but they did an Ivy League tour this week. Um, and so I had fun uh, going through all their pictures on Instagram and, and their posts. So they went to a lot of really awesome East Coast schools this past week. So that was great to see. And that's all my comments, actually. And our next uh, regular board meeting will be Monday, June 26. Um, is there a move? Will we adjourn, Madam President? Second. Thanks, Noah. Thanks, Steve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much.